Hello everyone, Attack Power here with Game 1 of the playoffs of Division 2 between Serb Daniels and Stardic in the Season 10 Steel Division 2 League. Let's dive right in. Alrighty folks, so we're here on Tali in Hantala and on the left in red we have Sir Daniels playing 84 Strelke on V4 Victory. And on the right in the blue we have Stardic playing 122nd Infantry with the Maverick income. If this matchup seems familiar, we did see two Div 1 players play this exact matchup, not on this map, uh, but they played it on the, whatever that not very common map is. And um, it was a great match. It was very fun. So I'm really looking forward, especially with V for Victory versus Maverick, an 800 point bonus by the end of C well, 600, really, if you math it out for Stardic here on Maverick. So it should be quite fascinating. Their decks look pretty standard overall. Uh, good number of IS2s coming out of Sir Daniel's uh, ISU 152 as well, coming in B phase. Um, you know, Katusha's. The usual, the usual thing about uh, 92 infantry. So nice chunky number there. Not a ton of snipers, though, just the one card. Um, so, yeah, from the 122nd side, very light on the Faka Wolves, which is kind of surprising from Stardic. Um, you know, only two cards of Stug's not take. He is taking the Stug four. Sorry. Um, you know, the both pack 43s, you're definitely going to need those. Taking off card of Martyr 2s, very interesting, and putting those Swamp Wolves in B phase, which I'm a fan of. All right, let's zoom in here. Let's see what Sir Daniel's throw down. OB-25 Assault Gun, Leader, Zis-3 AT Gun, Gavardia DPs, two of those, and another Zis-3. And scrolling down here to the center, Gavardia, two Gavardia DPs, SG-43, two Sapri Rocks, Sniper, OB-25 Assault Gun, uh, Leader, and another Sapri Rocks, and down south, a large chunk of troops, uh, not sure where they're going. I'm assuming up to this flag here. Uh, we have a sniper, OB25, Zis 3AT, two Gavardi DP, Zenart 37AA, and a leader. Up north here for Stardeck, we have MG42, Pioneer Fear, uh, SDKZ71 AA right off the bat, Sturm Grenadier, Latil AT uh, rifle, Sturm Gren 50 millimeter mortar. Uh, Sturm Grenadier, another Sturm Gren, Stu 42, Takin Torunta, Takin Torunta, which is a uh, AT Panzer Shrek unit, P uh, Pioneer for Taka Ampuya, their double sniper team, Pioneer, Sturm Pioneer, 50 cal, 50 millimeter, and another MG 42. Going down south, not nearly as much. Latil, Sturm Pioneer, Pioneer, Pack 40, MG 42, and a Sturm Grenadier. So uh, definitely going all in up north here. We see some more Latils going down, I believe. Yeah, another Latil going down. Uh, maybe some more MG42s, Pioneer there. So lots of stuff. Should be interesting. 122nd definitely has the tools to kill off this heavier armor. ISU 152 will probably actually be the most problematic unit. The Pack 43s can obviously eat IS2s live. That's not a big deal. But the ISU 152 is more of an issue because of its ability to kind of just obviously delete your pack 43s. Uh, but then you have IG 33s and Stu 42s out of 120 seconds. So you have a lot of 2K assets and you have some really good force fighting units. So I actually think it's a really good choice for this map. 84th, we saw, we've seen this division several times in this map. It's a good choice. You get all the good 2K things and some nice CQC in the form of uh, Sapri Rocks and stuff. And we are off. No early planes, it does not look like. No recon planes or anything. Uh, Stardick does have a BF-109 he could have called in, but he did not. So, interesting there. Usually you want to bring him in at the beginning. The placement of this SDK of Z71 is quite important. It's going to go into the center here. Not bad. It's going to leave the north pretty open, but it will cover off this whole center three flags, basically. He is making a, a small push here for the middle, and there's not much coming. To, well, I lied. There's a bunch coming to stop him. All this stuff I forgot about the southern part. Back 40 in this nice position to shoot down the road. Can't get too far down it, but it's not a bad spot. OB25 already in position. Remember, this thing does have heat shells that can fire quite a ways. Latil pushing forward anyway. Takam Puya, really dangerous. Latil's are not able to get into position. Needs an MG42 up here. He doesn't have it. He just has the Takam Puya. Latil does get out without dying. This Latil also gets out without dying. And it will claim a kill here. Down it goes. There goes the first transport. Second party of DP goes down. Wow. And the thing is, because it fired two shots basically simultaneously, the transport died without the unit coming out. That's pretty insane. So two nice kills there right off the bat. Pioneer getting caught out by everything. So these guys probably won't last. I assume these will die off quite quickly here. Takampoya forces off the SG-43. 
This thing's so good. And they're also always double starred, so they're really, really good then. So currently 13-10 right off the bat here for Stardeck. Sir Daniels needs to get an advantage here in A because B is going to be hellish for him. Downside, Sturm Grenadier creating a nice little bubble here. Smoke does go down from the Sturm Pioneer and Latiel to cover these infantry off. They're not capturing anything, and I don't think they have a chance against the Sapri Rocks. And of course, once these infantry get in, I think they're going to push across, though. Pack 40 is going to cause a little bit of an issue for him, although an OB-25 can definitely beat out that Pack 40 quite easily. Things pretty quiet, not going to lie. Another player doing anything too crazy. MG42 coming in. Uh, he's got to be careful. I mean, both these units have kind of, well, they're currently smoked off. And started getting this flag for free. I'm surprised he hasn't, like, moved into the building here. Sturmgren's pushing across with leader support. Those should do quite well. Not, at, like, right up against these Sapperty Docks, but certainly if they catch them at range. Although the Sapperty Docks are double DP machine gun, so maybe not as good as I first imagined it being. And both players in a very passive position. It's fascinating. So a ground attack here for the Stu-42. Does damage immediately to the sniper. So nice hit there. Sapperty Docks opening up onto the Sturmgren. Needs to follow his back. He has no chance. MG-42, though, opening up on it, so that's nice. That should pin him down relatively quickly, especially it's a two-star MG-42. 50 mil mortar immediately opening up. Sturmgrens did get out of line of sight, so nice heads-up play there. Sniper goes down to the Stu-42. PE-3 coming in for that MG-42. SDK of Z-7-1. Too far away to stop it. Does get some A on tar- Uh-oh. The PE-3 flies over the SDK of Z-7-1. It will go down, I think. As long as the SDK of Z doesn't lose sight early. It doesn't. I'm imagining a dead PE-3 here. Down it goes. That's a big kill. That's 100% worth losing a, an MG-42 over. Takampoya moving over to try to take out this OB-25, I would believe. BF-109 Recon now in. Double Takampoya, the do Takampoya double sniper, laying down its horrible damage. Takes out four units immediately and just falls back. Gavardi DP going to be a bit of an issue, although now it's going to take on those Gavardi DP. Not as good of a fight. You don't really... They, they will die. I mean, they are fragile. They're very fragile if anyone gets that reference. Wrong time of the year, but still. Sturm Pioneers versus Gavardi DP. I mean, I would think Gavardi DP. Oh! Grenadier gets caught out. Round the smoke. Interesting that that line of sight retained. That smoke is out of position. That would be why. Startup looks like he's going to lose this flag up north now. 242 did nice work there. I'm surprised he hasn't decided to like move it onto the road here, shoot down this road. There's nothing there to stop him. But now we're back to a 12-12. Which I guess, I mean, Stardick probably is happy with a 12-12 because technically he's down, you know, he's down a good number of points here. He'll be in total 200 points down by the end of this phase, but he's down by 20 every tick. 50 mil mortar doing what it does, pinning down that Gavardi DP's forced fall back, but it does take out the Takampuya. It's a big loss there. You only get two of them. Smoke coming in. Sturm Grenadier is going to cross. Sturm Grenadier is crossing over here as well. SG-43 does get a line of sight on these Sturm Grens. Not going to put down some early uh, suppression on these. Not what you want. Now the 50 mil throwing down some regular rounds. Sturm Grenadiers immediately fall back. He doesn't want that fight at all. The extra, da the extra suppression from the SG-43 swung this. If he would have stayed, he would have surrendered both these, and that would have been insane. But uh, Stardick doesn't want anything what to do with that. Maybe a little too quick on the retreat button there. Foggerwolf coming in. Takes out that Aziz-3. Nice Foggerwolf F8 here. He's got three, and that's it, though. He didn't call on any other Foggerwolves, which is really surprising because this deck can spam them hard. So really surprised. I mean, he put all his points into, like, support weapons, basically. Support and AT, but even mostly, like, even more so, mostly support. 50 mil mortars doing a lot of work right now. It's actually the reason he's winning a lot of these combats here. Pioneer Fear isn't able to get in fast enough. So SG-43 needs to die, or he can't really get through this, this forest area. He's probably going to lose the Pioneer Fear here. Unless, no, there's nothing over here that can stop it. Sturmgren's out in the open after the retreat. Not great. Falling back. Pack 40 moving into, oh, to take out the T-34. Okay, I see it now. A lot of troops coming in on north, though, from Sir Daniels. 
Currently, Stardick, though, does capture this because of the pin down Sapperty not reconnecting with the front line. 50 cal... Uh, 50 mil, not cal. Sorry, I'm so used to seeing 50 caliber, not 50 mil. Pins down one of the Sapperty rocks. Might help that Pioneer Fear get away. I'm not sure if he will, though. Taking a lot of damage right now. 50 mil, re-aiming up. Down south. Pioneer catch out some Gavardi DP. Pack 40 is going to help him out. Not sure he's going to win that fight. Stern Pioneer definitely will not win this one. But happens to stop right before and grabs his flag cheeky. Started continuing to getting a little bit of point bleed, and that's pretty big, actually. Every little point matters. Pioneer Fear, though, did go down, so losing that leader does suck. And all his Sturm Grenadiers were pushed way back. Sturm Grenadier, a solid MP44 unit, but it suffers from the same issues all these chunky MP44 units deal with. They obviously can get outranged by everything. And they just, I don't know, they don't put down an insane amount of damage. If they catch something out of cover, yes, they will like insta-melt them, it's crazy. But anything, you know, any like cover on cover, green to green kind of stuff, it just doesn't, they don't do that much damage. This position, really obnoxious if red can get to it. Of course, blue has an easy time of getting this because it can funnel troops in here, but if they can cut this off with this line here, it's really hard to get troops in then. 50 millimeters probably going to get hit. 50 millimeters is doing a lot of work, but it's not killing the stuff. That's not what it does. It basically just pins, and that's that. A fair number of rounds left still. Pack 40 needs to move into position if it wants to. Well, the T-34 uh, did move out. And we're back to a 12-12. Both players relatively happy to chill for the moment. Sapperty Docks will run into the Sturm Pioneer, which is still pretty suppressed. Although it's going to hit both the Pioneer and this at the same time. Latil trying to save itself. Screw everybody else. <laughs> And these Sturm Grenadiers are an unfortunate choice right now because they can't really fight here. It's too much open ground to spot them. Another Stu 42 in for Star Deck. Looks like he's just trying to buff up his support weapons here. IS-2 though in because of the lack of pressure. Sir Daniels can bring in this IS-2 uh, basically unpunished. Latiel is snuck in the back. I'm surprised he hasn't now like moved. Oh, he's going like way back. He's going all the way over here back. That seems a little... I don't know, it feels a little excessive. You could just go here and pick up any dudes coming south, but... Yeah, what are you gonna do? Fogwell does get its bombs off. Forced off by the 37 mil. I don't know what it killed. It killed, I think, one of the Gavardias. Or it was a failed bombing strike on this Sapity. Artillery SU-76 going after the Pack 40 Good choice because it can dodge the artillery out of um, 122nd. We do see some of that artillery, a 76 millimeter for Stardeck. Curly 12-12, I mean, I, I think Stardick should be pretty happy coming out of A phase with a point, with a ticket lead. And now he's got his, like, giga advantage. He's got to, like, he's got to win it now. Pack 40 versus IS-2 at long range, not ideal. The regular AP shell will not penetrate this thing. He needs it to be APCR. Stu 42 needs to fall back as well. He's obviously looking. He fell the Pack 40 back. Surprised he hasn't started moving the Stu-42 immediately. BF-109 forced off. There we go. Stu-42 on the on the run. Stu-42 now spotting out a sniper. Nice kill there. Yeah, this is the perfect response to this. Kill off these SG-43s. Open back up his reinforcement road and start pouring troops in. Is he just ground attacking? He is. So that was, like, lucky, I guess. I don't know what would have spotted it. I can't believe this 50 mil got by, to be honest with you. All right, artillery continue to come down. IS-2 off the main road there. Both players playing very passively. The thing is, for Sir Daniels, he's happy to, at this point now in B phase, he's happy to sit at a parity. Sniper does spot off that lat teal, though, so it doesn't look like he's going to get... Oh, this is the... He's using a smart order. I Seize? Is this the seize order? I don't even know what this is. I've never seen any player use them. Ever. This is a first. This is a fascinating first. Here comes a pack 43. The issue with this thing is it's going to get already out wherever it ends up. Two SU 76s now. 50 mil more to throw down some smoke here. Stu 42 is now kind of just wasting its ammo. He really needs to stop this from firing. They do not have infinite ammo. Artillery coming down on the Sapperty Docks. 
definitely a little off target there, unfortunately. I mean, it's, it's targeted perfectly, but it's it's missing badly. 50 mil mortar, though, can now see, I think. I believe this is, yeah, it's actually attacking it. So now it'll be quite accurate, and it'll do a lot of damage and fire a lot faster. Finally taking out one of those Sapity docks. That's the thing, too. Sir Daniels used that in A phase. That means he has no more of those. Stu 42 helping out on that Sapity. The uh, Pack 43 was repositioned. OB-25 chunking through that MG-42, though. Sapity Rock's going to take another hit from the Stu-42. Badity Fear coming in to vet up this Pack 43 Nice choice there. Okay, the Stu-42 is going to be out of ammo, and that's kind of a bummer because it's not it's doing absolutely nothing. Sturmgren, though, this is where it needs to be. It needs to be in a cover disparity, and then it can chop through some troops. You can see the damage is not insane. It really isn't. And the problem is, too, now it's splitting its fire, so instead of just finishing off this smaller Gavardia, switching back for you. You have to manually target in this case. 50 mil. Uh, I, it's gonna. It's not going to take that fight. Other Sturmgren's out of position, unfortunately. Stu 42 missed its opportunity to do anything helpful, and it's going to be out of ammo. So yeah, now begins the infinity points here. 50 mil mortar was targeted instead of being like spot shooting, unfortunately. Now it will shoot with target, which means it should do pretty. Oh no, it gets pinned before it can. 50 mil mortar at close range actually should win because there's only one guy. I'm just kidding. He's not going to take that fight. Started being extremely cautious. I'm not going to lie, I think it's lost him some fights that he could have won. I appreciate the caution, but. Latiel did go down, so no transport snipes. Ooh, a double Katusha. They're only really worthwhile in double. Oh, no. Oh, good God. Oh, good God. Katusha completely off target, though. Can't even blame the Katusha this time because it was just a missed target of the rockets. So complete waste of that. Lucky for Stardeck because that had been on target. He lost his coming out. That would have been absolutely devastating. Pack 40 in position now, hitting some of those Gavardi DP. Obviously not what it's for, but it'll do just fine. TU2F <laughs> revealing that that AA was completely missed. It's 242 getting a target on Aziz 2 there. Very nice. Pack 43 moving into position. Uh, he did take turn off the HE, which is the right choice. You don't want to reveal this thing. Its only job is killing that IS-2. And now Stardeck is moving this AAPC now knows it's getting targeted. SG-43 spotting out that Kev K-E-V-O-S. Uh, Pac-43 going after the SG-43. This is not good. You, you, this is not a good fight. You do not want this to be happening. Uh, 50 mil could be firing. And this is bad. This is not good. I mean, this thing might win, but it's going to take damage. You don't want your Pac-43s taking any damage. You need them to be full health so they can fight the good fight. Stug4 finally in position to help save that pack 43 will kill off that SG-43 very nicely. Artillery, counter battery. Uh, the SU-76s are going to win all day because these are, you know, soft targets and they are hard targets. Currently 12-12. I mean, Sir Daniels should be happy. This Sturmgren is in a good spot, but could move forward and probably grab one of these. The only issue that will evoke a response, which is coming anyway, so... BF-19 floating about, double 37 mil. Sir Daniels has had plenty of time to build up a whole bunch of support defense weapons and stuff. With Stardick really not pushing hard anywhere, he's had plenty of time to just get comfy and get all his ducks in a row. So he's got AA, he's got AA everywhere. He's got one, two, three, four, five 37 mils. Good God. So no plane will fly again. Although Stardick... Shouldn't be too hurt by this. He's got only the one card of Focke Wolves and his recon plane. So, shouldn't be a big deal. Double Sturm Grenadier at three star vet should do quite a lot of damage. Yep, this is what he's looking for. Now, the Shrafniki are going to be a bit of an issue. Even with the three star and the Sturm Gren, that's a lot of DPs. Although, they're doing pretty well. Triple star, guys. You cannot forget how deadly three stars is. Three star veterancy is insanely good. Tagon Puya out in the open, not really where you want to be. Fogwolf somehow still gets through the absolute wall of freaking things. OB-25, though, spotting out these infantry. They're going to take a lot of damage. Gre Panzer, uh, just Grenadier, not Panzer Gren. Grenadier caught out, pinned down. Tagon Puya going to go down here. Not really worth it, 
honestly. Storm Grinders desperately trying to get in. They need to go further deeper into the forest to capture this flag. Storm Grinders catching out the Strafniki out in the open, doing lots of damage, even with them retreating. And this is what I was talking about. Storm uh, MP44s, anything that's not in cover takes disgusting amounts of damage. But still, I mean, this is not great for Stardeck. A long game is not going to favor him. Obviously, once we get to C phase, then Sir Daniels is on the other foot with double the the income that Stardick has. And we only have three minutes left in phase B here. And Stardick has made no significant, like, gains at all. I mean, he's made some push here, but not to get any flags, really. He doesn't have enough troops to really secure this. And now Strafniki are pouring in. Like, Stardick needs to turn on the afterburners here and start making it. I mean, he's got the advantage for the first couple minutes of C phase, too. So, you know, that's when his income is absolute maximum advantage. I feel like we should be seeing more. I, I would, I, I can't, he really needs to start targeting his artillery onto this SG-43. Clear that out so he can actually move troops across here. Or he needs to be more cautious about it and move them back here. Like, just like that, like all the way back. Strong Grand's in the woods. I would feel good about this other than the fact they're very weak. And they no longer have their three-star disgustingness. Caught out there. Smoke is not enough. Zis 3 off of center there. A really nice placement by Sir Daniels. Strong Grand's getting wiped out. They did take some units with them, but it's not enough. Pack 43 catching out the Sapperty. It's not going to be a huge deal. Dock in Torunta here. Need to fall back. They don't have any actual long-range weaponry. I mean, none of Stardex's artillery has been killed yet, despite getting hit pretty hard by counter battery. We now have 150 mil, so now this is a this is a big artillery piece. We have another one coming in, and another one coming in. Stardex not really putting many troops on the front line, just pouring into support weapons. Uh, this, I'm a little concerned about his choices here. Strafniki versus Grenadier, not a chance. Not a chance in heck. Sturmgren's trying to get out of this. They know it's not their fight. SG-43 picking up that pack four. It needs to fall back. Zis-3 absolutely erased from existence. So nice kill there. Sturmgren's pushing back in. KV-85, 8S, not 5. 8S. So annoying. Uh, did get hit by the pack 40 but the pack 40 getting pinned by all these troops here that are now triple-starred. We do have a co combat in, Commander. Focke-Wolf going in, gets its bombs off anyway. My goodness gracious, this thing gets through, but it should die, I think, this time. Eh, maybe not. Jeez. 37 mils really don't have a ton of killing power. It's kind of frustrating. He literally has five, and that thing still got a bomb off. Like, that's kind of insane. KV-8S, pretty uncontested here. It's going to be an issue. Counter battery coming down on the 150. It's taking a lot. It needs. It's falling back. It needs to. Where did the third one go? Because he, he called three in. I don't see. Didn't. Right. I could have sworn he called in two more 150s. There's one. Two. I thought there were three in total. Maybe one of them was just one of these, and I just missed saw it. Huh. Interesting. Ig 18s coming in down south. He was not able, he's too slow on this. This would just took too long to exploit this gap down here. Sturmgren going for the uh, reinforcement cap, I believe. He doesn't have enough to follow it up. If he had a ton of stuff, I'd say, all right, that's a genius move, but he has nothing to follow it up, is the issue. Sturmgren should beat the Sapperty if it weren't for all this other stuff standing here. If he can kill it off, that'd be pretty big, but he's not gonna, he's gonna fail. And we're now into C phase. There, okay, there were two. I knew it. There's three. Jeez. Attack power. What are you doing? Ooh, is this two getting spotted by the martyr? Oh, martyr needs this kill so bad. Oh, and he can't get it. Oh, that's so disappointing. Since he brought these in A phase, he should only have three. So that would have been huge to kill that off. Starting on a 1311. That is not enough, though. 25 minutes of, of, like, basically the rest of the game now on a single tick. That's definitely not enough. And because of that thing moving, all this artillery coming down in the wrong position now. 
There's a lot of artillery, and here comes a whole bunch of troops. I'm not sure, though. I just don't think Starduck was aggressive enough. I mean, he's making great use of his, his veterancy and things. I, I gotta give him credit for that. But... I mean, there's just not enough... He, he didn't make progress anywhere. I mean, he made little pushes. He, he played like me, to be honest with you. Like, he played slow and methodically, like, trying to eke out every advantage to play really cautiously and get good trades. But he never actually made any progress. And his advantage is slowly bleeding away. And the issue is, in the long run, these SU-76s will actually, like, win. That's the, that's the, that's the rub that's actually really quite annoying. Is in the long run, these SU-76s will actually, like, win this counter-battery fight. Stuk-4 taking out one of those SU-76s. Oh, that's a nice kill. Especially because this artillery is falling in the wrong spots. So now he's going to start to reload, have to reload this stuff, too. I'm sure he hadn't noticed. He's put so much, so many points into art artillery, I feel like he'd really be paying attention to where things are coming from. This one's actually out of ammo, funny enough. Yeah, I feel like his artillery is really, I mean, he's big into these Sturmgrens, and I just don't know if they're the right choice here. They're strong at the exactly the right range, but they're really bad at every other range, of course. Focke-Wulf coming in, I think it was going for the TU-2F. It's going to get absolutely brick-walled. And the 37 mils are going to fail once again. This artillery is too close together. He's just getting, like... He's giving Sir Daniels free counter-battery there. Is this two getting on the Stug 4 at maximum range? This is going to be a little bit of a struggle. Not if it shows side armor, though. <laughs> Not if it shows side armor. CKFZ does force off the TU-2 FP3. Lost his target, I suppose? This 1AA piece, though, may not be enough. Here comes another P3. Sturmgrenades are piled up heavy. Bachelor de Fear probably going to take a hit here. Nope, does manage to dodge it. He's going to get held up. The issue is progress up here. There's so much room until you get to this flag. That's the issue. Now, now an IS-2 is in. Talking Torunta here, getting out. Will it get its Panzer Shrek off on this stuff? It will not. BF-109 will probably die here, I have to imagine. Yeah, it's got bad resilience. It does not have the resilience of the Focke Wolf. And down it goes. Still 1311 for Stardick. But again, a single tick is really rough on this constantly imploding battlefield for him. Talking to Runta does take out the T-34, so that's nice. Zis-2, though, moving in for this Stug-4, it will have its kill. Pack-4, uh, IG-18, actually? Just kidding. Down goes the SU-76. Nice kill there, but the Zis-2 on target. APCR will pen every time. Pioneer helping, though. Will it be enough? I don't think it is. Oh, but the Zis-2 goes wide. And the Pioneer does pin it down. It survives to fight another day. IS-2, though... That's going to be an issue. It misses. What is this Shug trying to do? There was a Pac-40 over here. Pac-43. I guess it died at some point. I, I missed when. No, no, there it is. It's still there. So the Ice-2 is getting out of range of that. We do have a dead SU-76, so the counter battery actually succeeded here. Another SDKZ-71 did come in, kills the Takin Torunta. Flakverling, not an SDK, but the Flakverling might take this P3 out. Oh, it's get blocked. Line of sight blocked. It needs to be closer, like, to here instead. Ah, uh, P3's gonna get away. Didn't deserve to. Here goes more artillery fire now for this SU-76. My kill is this Studebaker snap. That'd be huge. Killing off the ammo is almost as important as killing the units. Especially when you're using things like Katushas, which are really ammo-hungry. Uh-oh. Katusha's going for a big kill here on these really tight support weapons. 
could be massive. IG-33 putting down a nice shot there, killing off that Gavardia. Studebaker forced off, so it won't be getting killed today. That shot, though, right there does kill this SU-76. So, actually, some of that counter-battery getting killed off here. Katusha, wow, wow, wow. Folks, this is twice we've seen Katusha's not completely suck. This is miraculous. Not this game. I was watching another game on the same exact map. It'll probably be up in the channel. Might have already been, but it definitely will be at some point. And Katushius did something in that game, and they did something here. It's miraculous. Flakverling was try was moved forward here. Not going to stop this P3, though. These infantry are going to take ouchies. P3 could go down, though. I, do these have, I thought these had very good resilience. It just feels like they're smoking really fast. So now, with the artillery dead... The question is, is can Stardick leverage his artillery to hold back the hordes for a very long time? P3 does not get its shots off this time. IS, uh, IS2 moving around. Fogwell still gets through. Good lord, this thing can't be stopped. Can't stop, won't stop. Blackwing has plenty of ammo. I keep thinking like he's going to run out of ammo, but no. This is not a hobo tango world where A just runs out of ammo all the time. This SG-43 has been like the most important unit here, just stopping everything constantly. And if he hadn't pissed away all his ammo on this S-242, shooting this tree line for 10 minutes, he could have done the ground attack thing on this and killed this off. Like, artillery needs to, like, I, there's no more counter battery going on. He's going after the Katushas and has killed none of them. He needs to stop that. It's too easy to move those. I will say Sir Daniels has been a little lax in his artillery movement, which has allowed this to happen. OB-25 going after the Stu-42. Okay, one of them has a line of sight, the other does not. Stu-42 is out of ammo anyway, so unless he reloads it, it's a pretty useless unit. IS-2 misses the Stu-4 and it will get away. Stu 42 moving out of range. Yeah, this is this is a this is a poor choice now. It's not like Sir Daniel's just gonna sit there with his katushas and wait for these artillery shells to hit. They either killed them on the first shot or they're missing. Like that's about it. Like you either got a lucky first shot and it killed him, or it doesn't do anything. Stuke 4 up north did go down to the IS2. IS2 obviously a, a, a serious presence there. Stardick's still holding the 1311, but he's lost a lot of troops up north, and he's got nothing to stop this line of Strafniki and stuff coming in. K8S takes a kill from the I8, IG-18. Nice kill there. Suopamosa very strong at CQC, but not at long range, especially against double machine gun infantry. But they are triple star, and we cannot underestimate the power of the triple star. IS-2 finding that IG-18, doing its HE damage to that. Pack 43 getting unloaded by the SG-43. Pack 43 trying its best. IG-18 needs to move in to help really bad. Stug 44 should as well. These groups are like the most important thing. Uh, just a flood of IG-18s. He had a B-Phase card of six ig 18 so we're seeing them now. He also has a B-Phase card of IG-33, so he has six of those too. So just like tons of support weapons, but now we've lost the 1311 because of this middle spot. But an IG-33 should fix that soon, killing off this Sapri Dox. IS-2 won't be able to get too close to that without the Pack 43 finding it. IS-2, with the help of the SG-43, is able to easily find and potentially kill this Pack 43, which would be a huge loss. Down it goes. Yeah, that was that was not great. The 150's aiming up on the IS-2. He's waiting for everything to get targeted, and then he'll turn off return fire once everything is targeted, but now it's moving, so the whole exercise is kind of a waste. I'm not a fan of the targeting of the heavy tanks with artillery. I just think it's too easy to dodge. I understand it will kill them eventually. It's not a bad option. It's just not a good option, especially when there's so many soft targets that need to be killed. Like that. That was a good use of artillery. Stug 4 goes down. Stug 42 does have heat shells, but they ain't gonna do it. <laughs> They're not gonna get the job done. 
Latiel will not kill this KV-8S either. We're back to a 12-12 though, because now the North has totally crumbled. And the overwhelming income advantage that Sir Daniels now has is starting to show. After about 26 minutes, the uh, so that would be 23 minutes remaining, that's when the income's balanced out. At this point now, uh, Sir Daniels has 450 more points than Stardeck. Now we can see a lot of points went into AA, a lot of points went into artillery and stuff, and ammo for set artillery. But the thing is, Stardick responded in kind. He spent tons on this artillery. Most of his B phase advantage went to these artillery guns. Right? 120, 240, 360. Trying to get some troops in to defend this flag. Now, now he's on the defensive and Sir Daniels with the flag advantage for the first time in this game. Not sure what he's doing with these Grenadiers. IS-2 did die to the Pac-43. So that's a nice kill there. Pac-43 doing what it does, killing big armor pieces. Katusha strike up north. That was a waste. No, wait, just kidding. Oh, yeah, no, it was a waste. Flak Verling was moved in time. Oh, no, just the hitting. Maybe not. Ooh, he targeted slightly different. The second one did land a little better, but it didn't really do any damage. I assume, though, there's nothing here to stop this thing. <laughs> the uh, artillery piece does have AP, but it's not going to do much. Artillery coming down these infantry. Good choice there. Shermgren can absolutely wipe this stuff out. Talking to Runta here, not the ideal unit for this situation. IG-18, also not the ideal unit for this situation. Pac-43 was killed off, though. Pac-40 back here. Uh, Pac-40 and Pac-43 were both killed off, I should say. Pac-40 here, not, uh, not ideal. Yeah, not ideal at all. This is bad. This is very bad. There's no weapon here that can actually kill this IS-2 cleanly. Black Verling will wipe out infantry that get close to it, but it obviously not what you want. P3 finally finishing off this artillery unit here. Suopolos is catching out some Gavardia. As Sir Daniels is pushing all over the front now. IG-33 ground attacking to get the Sapri rocks out of this position here. ISU-152 though going to delete that Grenadier. I mean, honestly, it would have been better just to put an infantry here and push it up to this point. That would have held it. Just fine. IS-2 carving through everything. Pac-40 still wastefully firing at these units. Shook-3 can kill that KV-8S. That would be fine. Supo is it out of position here. Pac-40 just getting slaughtered. Shook-3 falls back now. 150 coming down on these Shrafnikis. It's not bad. Probably unnecessary at that point, but it's not bad. Shermgren's doing nice work clearing out some of these infantry. They're going to have a lot of trouble, though, against this KV-8S. And now all the other support coming in. Three Fokka Wolves. I'm not sure if... He, maybe he bought all three of these at some other point. Because otherwise it'd be insane for his C phase income to manage that. IG-33 kind of just wasting its ammo away again. I mean, if the flag hasn't been bumped back already, he's not getting He's obviously sitting a little too far back. And again, the easy solution to this is this right here. No, 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 no. It's just going right to here. Oof. Hey, it happens to the best of us. Croup missing its first shot. That's frustration squared. I can tell you that. It's got its HE shells on, so it's going to pick stupid targets now. Like that infantry unit. Katusha coming in for this croup over here. This croup is quite weakened and it goes down to the first hit. Wow. Miracle Katusha's today, folks. Grenadier forced to unload. This is actually probably for the best. So it doesn't unnecessarily like, stupidly drive out into the middle of the everything. I shouldn't say stupidly. Sorry. Overly aggressive. Apologies. I'm a little frustrated. I, I've seen Stardick play better. And I was not a fan of his his play choices this game at all. 
I mean, he's the Maverick player, and he really wasn't playing like he was the, the Maverick player. He was playing like he was also on balanced income and could sit around for a while. SCKFZ should kill off this PE3. Down goes one. All right, nice kill there. He finally gets this flag back. Whole bunch of IG-18s and such over here doing what they do. This IG-18 not as miraculous as the first one that killed off the last KV-8S. And with it out of HE sh uh, heat shells, it's not going to do very well. Artillery are going to run out of ammo soon as well. IG-33 now out of ammo. Useless hunk. Now laying there. Stug-3 goes down to the IS-2. Again, the real answer here is pack 43. He had six. We've seen what? One, two, three, four. I thought only four. Maybe there were more we've missed, though. He may be basically out of them. That's very possible. Especially now Katusha targeting this area as well. It's a second set, I believe. Yeah, there's three up here and one down here. And units continue to pour in. We have 12 minutes left. Is this ticking down? Should have a little thing. Oh, it doesn't show the time because they put the time limit on. But Stardick is still in this. I mean, remember, if, if he can keep uh, Sir Daniels from ticking him all the way down, Stardick will still win this. So he's still in this despite the overwhelming position he's currently in. TU2F, he does get out, just barely. Pac-43 needs to get his crap together and go kill some of this IS-2. But now they're just ground attacking the edge of this wood, so it's going to be a, probably a little difficult to get in there. He's decided to throw down smoke. Again, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Just move and then move. Huge attack coming, though. Pack 40 is a, it's a good buffer, but if the IG-33 was still functioning, that would make me feel better about this situation, but it's not. IG-18's trying to move back in. Pack 43 falling back further. Shoebaker goes down. Pack 40 has APCR shells on. That is very unfortunate. That means these things will not die in the transport. MG-42 in a good spot, technically out of line of sight of these ISU-152, so that, that's nice. Up north, the IS-2 is dead. It got Artied out. After my commentary about hating arty kills on these heavy tanks, he did it. More power to him, what can I say? I can say there's another one. <laughs> and that IS-2 took a lot of damage to get to that point. It took two Focke Wolf bombing runs and then a lot of artillery hits. And I don't think he has the resource to put that much effort into every single one of these. Especially now with the Zen Arts triple star, this will finally die. I cannot imagine this survives with two three-star Zen Arts going after this thing hard. Right now. No way. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's actually incredible. Oh no. Massive Katusha strike all over this line. Fallback's going down really quick. Pack 43 needs to survive. IG-18 goes down. Pack 43 will live through this one once again. But the fact is, it keeps getting forced out of position. So it hasn't been able to have any effect. There's another Pack 43. I knew there were more. But he's putting it very aggressive. Oh, my goodness gracious. Stug 3, I don't know what it's doing. This is a bad choice. This is a bad life decision here. This infantry does not have AT. This Fusilier does. Focke-Wolf coming in for the KV-8S. Okay. Zenart's not shooting at it? It's a little weird. KV-8S does go down to what? I'm not sure. Stu-42, maybe? I think maybe the Stu-42. IG-152s continue to just chop at this thing. Artillery now coming down on the edge of this woods. Grenadier's in a good spot. This is what you need. Pack 43 can work its way back forward. Finally has HE off. Problem is now we have this SG-43 here too. SDKMZ pushing forward to eliminate some enemies. 
SG-43 getting wiped. Gavardia should get wiped as well here. Always fun to see that. Any further and it's dead though. Moves out even a meter more and it's probably instantly dead. Here comes the pack 43. Stardex still holding on. Eight minutes left. Sir Daniels has got to flip this count. Where did that pack 43 go? It's right there. Uh, it stopped? No, Stardex, go for it. MG42 now dead. Grenadier's getting killed off here. Gavardia getting in and going for this flag as well. 14-10 now for Sir Daniels. That's still not enough. A single tick is not enough. I think he needs the double to win this thing. I mean, maybe a single tick is enough, but I'm not sure if it is. SDK of Zed can pull another infantry delete move, but oh no, oh no. Eee! Oh, and it gets the miss. <laughs> Flirting with death. All right, T-34 is going to move forward and get killed here, hopefully, by this pack 43. And I say hopefully just to keep this game exciting. Pack 43 now. Here we go. Boom. There's... Oh, it missed. Oh, my God. Rage. Sub 1,000 meters misses. There's the first pen. Still takes damage. It really cannot suffer. No, Stardeck. Oh, my God. You might as well have killed the T-34 at that point. Pakin Turunta getting a nice kill there on the armor. Needs to pop out and do it again. Panther Shrek takes a while to reload. That's the issue. Commandant on the front line here. <laughs> Still 14-10. Six minutes left. IS-2 over here is now hiding. Pack 43 in a nice spot here to cover down this road. That's a really nice line of sight. Never seen that one before. Talking to Runa does take out that infantry, so nice there. Stu 42 doesn't have the heat shell. The Commandant is probably going to die here. Ooh. Stu 42 gets held up on the Gavardia with its machine gun. 15 9 now for Sir Daniels. He's found it. Bockelwolf coming in for that SU 76. Will it get the bombs on target? It will not. Talking to Runa. Kills another T-34. Pops back in. Stardick making some nice moves. Pack 43 bounces on the IS-2. Will it get its next pen in? Yep. Down it goes. IS-2 down. The double tick, though, is back breaking here. And now it's just too much. There's too much stuff. Five minutes left, and I think Stardex is collapsing now. After a glorious fight. Heat Shell one-shots the T-34 can't seem to get the flag <laughs> there you go you got it <laughs> no he's going too far he's going too far no it's too far Sardex back up oh no he gets side shotted oh no Katusha coming in for the town Studebaker goes down though before it can unload nothing to stop it though 16-8 now for Sir Daniels Pack 43 on the T-34, kills that off, recaptures that flag. Martyr 2 trying its best to hold off the tide. IC-152 actually out of HE shells. Pack 43 coming out from its hiding position. IC-152 ground attacking. Kenda, oh no, Gavardia spots out the Pack 43. That's really bad. Infantry driving through, surrendering lots of stuff. Sumapuosa just out of line seven, but now it's retreated, so now it's being spotted. Oh no. What is this thing shooting? SDK of Zed keeping off in PE3, but 17 7 now for Sir Daniels. Double tick about to even it up. Stardex still in the lead, technically. But he is ticking down rapidly. Oh my goodness, he's so close. Pack 43 getting held up on a T-34. We'll take it out. It needs to fall back now. Stuk 3 in position. I don't see any way that Stardick gets back to a 14-10. That's what he needs. If he got back to a 14-10, he might still have this. But on the double tick with three minutes left, I think this is going to flip right here. What a freaking game. I mean, I got to give Stardick credit. He 
made this a lot closer than I thought he would, to be honest with you. With the way he was playing, I thought he was going to get absolutely wrecked much sooner, but he made a heck of a game out of that. So maybe his choice was the right one. I don't know. Although if he had taken more flags, Sir Daniels would have never gotten back into that from where he was. So trades here, starting actually out trading 3580 to 3465. Very, very close, though, which means Sir Daniel literally had like over a thousand points more to play with. Like, no, even more than that. Like, so, oh, that's a lot. Yeah, like 1,200, 1,300 points more than Stardeck. So, I mean, Stardeck, I think, was really outplaying him, to be honest with you. KB8S doing a lot of damage. That was that one in the middle there. IS2 killing some Stugs, but that's about it. IS2, this one, did kill off a of, uh, Pack Krupp. Yeah, nothing like shining bright here. Some armor. Katusha, this is the most epic, heroic Katusha of all time, essentially. It really is. Killing off SDKFZ and a pack 43. I mean, that's that is abnormally wonderful for a Katusha. On the other side here, Stu 42 did a ton of damage all the way across. Again, wish he went to wasted the rest of his HG shells on the edge of that tree line there. Uh, SDKFZ71, this is the one that popped in and out, getting some cheeky kills there. That was exciting. Talking to Runta, taking out a KV8S. Uh, 150 did okay. I, I just don't know. I, I don't think the artillery was able to be leveraged well enough, I think is the issue. Pack 43s did fine. They just didn't do enough. That was an exciting one. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting over on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.